Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. Uh, there was a question there and um, it was hard, a bit hard to explain and I think uh, the easiest way is to do a video and I was requested to do a video to explain what the numbers on the back of the security keys mean. Now each one of these are a security key, that's probably a, a video for another time but I'll give you the quick rundown. Each key is unique as far as the profile, the shaping, the grooving of the key. So you can't exactly take these keys to your local hardware and get them cut. They're what's known as a patented design, which means that the key blades, you can't just make them, they're hard to make, they've got security features in them, they're quite, quite complex and they suit the appropriate lock barrel or lock cylinder or lock plug, whatever you want to call it. So these particular keys here, a lot of locksmiths issue and they're on uh, what we call a, they're a do not copy key. So these keys are deliberately sold to clients so that they cannot be duplicated without the client's knowledge. If a client wants a copy, it's not a problem. They can order a copy only through the registered locksmith who sold them the system in the first place. So for example, although there are other multi-lock dealers in Sydney, my particular keys, uh, they wouldn't cut unless they had the authority card. Um, other ones where they have our name on, no one else will cut it no matter what, well any any good locksmith, any normal locksmith wouldn't. They also can't get the key blades, so that's where uh, it kind of stops. Uh, with other ones like this, um, these are basically a, a Gainsborough system, which is here and it's engraved with our name. Once again, when somebody owns a system, another locksmith is handling a system, even though they might be able to cut them, they won't. Um, on this particular one, other people have this and other people have this, and other people do have this profile too, but generally we all only do our own restricted key systems. Now the question was, um, that's just a bit of background, the question was, what do all those numbers mean? So I thought I'd come up with a, a chart and kind of explain that to you. First of all, I wanted to tell you that sometimes numbers on the back of the key actually do represent the actual direct combination for the lock. So here we have some Brava keys and they have a number on the back. Now the number represented on the back of this lock is 314513. So if I was to use my little key gauge here and I go to my first depth, I've got a 3. And then I go to my second position, I've got a 1. My third position, I got a 4. So you see what's happening here? Well, that's our actual number there. With keys like this, you do have to be careful. Uh, if someone was to catch a glimpse of that number, they could go away and duplicate another key without you knowing, simply by re being able to remember a six-digit number. The next thing about it is, is that um, these particular keys, sometimes the code is almost correct sometimes there's a high pin or a low pin so even if you do cut that key to code sometimes on particular locks if it does have a number you might not get it exactly right or it might be clicking in the lock or might not work at all but on those particular keys that is a direct code on the back of the key and that's what that means so let's push that aside let's get back to the point of the question as to what all these numbers on the back of the key mean now most restricted security key systems um, are part of a master key system. So this is a system we would design. And there's different ways other people do it, and I'll probably get crucified for uh, some of the terminology and things that I use. The question was, uh, can you tell me what the terminology and things are? There are different terminologies. Um, most of the time we stick to a lot of the general ones. Sometimes we like to get a little bit fancy and alter things, but the rule of thumb when doing any masking is always try and keep it simple, try and keep it logical, and leave room for expansion. Um, you know, they're just a, a couple of them. There's hundreds of points and, and tips and rules and and things when it comes to mask keying but as far as being able to identify the keys and what the numbers mean I thought I'd draw up this quick chart now the chart we start with the GGMK which is grand great grand master key so that's pretty much your highest level of that you can go and I know people can stick a G in front and go great great grand master key we can do that if you want but for this example Great Grandmaster is as high as most systems generally go, unless we're talking about a huge building like a shopping center or a hospital. Under that, you've got Great Grandmaster. On a lot of smaller systems, that's about as high as it goes. Some systems, they only go as far as a master key, and MK is meaning master key. MKA were basically just splitting off from there and MKB were splitting off from there. So in this particular example, let's say that this was a hotel, okay, and you've got the great grandmaster. Now the great grandmaster will work the office, the boss's office, and everything on site. 
The Grandmaster key might work everything apart from the boss's private office or one or two things that only the boss would access. So that would operate the whole site below that. Let's say that this particular, um, what was it, a hotel uh, we're doing as an example, has two towers, an A tower and a B tower. Okay, so this then would be everything below. So this grand mask key would work both towers. This great grand mask key would work everything below here. And at any level we can separate things and keep things where only, um, you know, the Grand Mask Key or Great Grand Mask Key can operate. Let's not confuse it too much. Below that we have Sub Mast Key, SMK. A lot of the time you could just do Mast Key 1, but we've got Mast Keys and then we've got Sub Mast Keys below that. Okay, so basically you can have multiple levels and a lot of the time all of the terminology like SMK, Sub Mast Key, MK, Mast Key, GMK, Grand Mast Key, GGMK, Great Grand Mast Key, and then there's a few others here I haven't told you, which is uh, CK as in Change Key. So what, if you were to look at the, this example, and this was Tower A, and we've got our Mast Key that operates everything in Tower A, then we've got our Sub Mast Key, uh, Sub Mast Key 1 for Level 1, Sub Mast Key 2 for Level 2. So the manager, of tower A would have this key and they can operate everything in that tower. They might have individual cleaners for each level and they would get uh, cleaner 1 would get level 1 and cleaner 2 would get cleaner 2. So this is a sub master key, it would open up every door on level 2 and this one here would open up every door on level 1 indicated by the 1 and the 2, that's how you would identify it. Moving down to the change keys, these would be possibly the keys that you would issue to the clients who wish to rent the rooms. So you would go change key tower A and you would then have the door number there. And then below that you might have another number which is the actual amount of keys that have been cut for that one door. Uh, and that might go all the way to 20, you might have 20 rooms. So you'd have uh, change key tower A and then room 20 and then you'd have a following number. So hopefully that's not too confusing. If it is, you can always replay, and other locksmiths do it different ways as well, but we all generally have a, a pyramid format when it comes to uh, must key systems. Now here's a few examples. Now this is the boss's key in the top uh, right hand corner. So the first line here that you see would be the system number, and my pen doesn't work. So the first thing, every key, every key uh, system has is a system number. This is current here where it says GN0645. This is a system number. This is for locksmith to identify the system because for every restricted key system we have a file. Whether it be digital, analog, it doesn't matter, we have a file and that has all the all the layout of all the keys, the pins, everything and uh, who they're issued to, uh, when we last cut them, who's allowed, who's not allowed, all those type of things and that's restricted information that no locksmith will ever give out or pass on or tell you about unless you actually own the system. So here we have this system number here DR7211. So that tells the locksmith what the system is allowing them to then pull out the file and know what they're dealing with. Below that we have GGMK so that's the highest level key that we have and there's one been issued. That's one way to kind of write the coding on the key to allow us to know exactly what's going on with that key. Down here's another example. We start off with the system number one, once again and we're submast sub key A. So submast key A, that's that one. And this is point one at the end. So that tells me that this is the first key that's been issued. Okay, so when I look at my chart and it says, um, let's say two keys issued, I know that there's a point one and a point two in that location there. Here's another example here where basically we've got CKB. So to start off with, we know that that's on tower B and uh, CKB one. So that's now tower B room number one. Okay, so there's our system number. There's the uh, position or the type of key that it is. And down the bottom here, because it's quite it's quite fine to lay things out however your stamping machine does it as long as as long as it's good for you and it's logical and it's functional then some people use two lines some people use three lines you can even do one line if you want it depends on what who you're working with and what system they use and what works good for them so that 
key basically represents that key there and um, that would be uh, so that's t tower tower B room 1 key number 12 so very straightforward here's a few little examples now that um, just to jazz it up a bit we've got the system number and then we put the tower number then we put the room number and then we put the amount of keys so this is acceptable here too and for some customers I like to do things in a way that they can understand so on our paperwork we'll do the corresponding um, paperwork to say A equals ta tower A, B equals tower B, R1 equals room 1 so we write it all down very simply very straightforward so if the next person has to come up and pick up the system they can tell R1 means room 1 and A means tower A just writing down notes is very good a lot of electricians do it you leave yourself a path to track back by uh, logical notes and things along those lines and then on a, on a complex system it gives you half a chance so there's another example we could write it this way we could write it this way with three lines here's another example system number and instead of putting a we've put tower one perhaps the staff call it tower one so that's quite acceptable too and then you have room 1.2 so you know that this key works room one in tower one and this is a second key that's been issued for that door so if this example of this hotel if they have two keys per room um, let's say for an example and um, you know one of them goes missing they know which key exactly goes missing or if they issue one key to one person and they get one key back and they're not sure they can always tell by these last two numbers who actually had that key all these other information here um, isn't as critical as probably this last one for the client the top one is more for the top one is more for the locksmith, second and third line are more for the client. But of course we need them as well, otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to know what keys are where. So uh, here's another example of another way of writing it, okay. System number on top, uh, room 1.1, okay. There's another way too, all of them are acceptable. You know, we could even put an A or something at the front, as long as long as it gave all the information which we need on a key. Now if we flick back to this key here we have uh, NA427B38 so because there is no great grand master key and there is no sub master key there's only really um, how do you say there's probably an A and there's probably a B okay so my writing's pretty pretty bad so we got the system number that tells us who it is, where it is, and things that, what's happening with it. And we've got an A and a B. And we can tell on how many keys have been issued from the A by that second number, which is 38. And we can tell how many B keys have been issued. A lot of, a lot of people might split their business or office into an A or a B. They might even do A, B, C, D. It really doesn't matter. We can do unlimited, almost unlimited possibilities of these things. But on a small business, you'll probably only have an A and a B key. Um, if we start using terminology like uh, MK or GMK, the customers get really confused. So a lot of the time, locksmith me included, we might go A1, A or B or tower one or room one. We, I, we might even put on a, on a room like this, we might even have cleaner point one, um, tower one, cleaner one, point one and things along those lines. So that way we know what key it is. If it's a school, you might do, um, uh, classroom six and then put point two as in um, this is the second key cut for classroom six so there's a little brief uh, uh, explanation of some of the terminologies there are a lot more if you have more just put them down in the description there's probably a whole heap that I haven't uh, haven't spoken about I've just uh, given you a few straight off the bat just to give an example of what the numbers on the back of the keys mean and how we use them and how they're good for not only locksmith being able to identify the system but also the client being able to identify the keys that they've issued out so that that way you know, they've got their key control okay any comments leave down below thanks for watching